Right, welcome to episode 11 of the N64 podcast. I'm your host, Andy, and uh, with me is Editwix again here in studio. How you, how you doing, man? I'm doing all right. All right, good, good. Glad to hear it. Today we're going to be talking about, uh, well, we're going to be talking about Tetris, the new Tetris specifically on the N64. Before we get into that, though, we got a few things to cover. Um, so I got an announcement. Uh, for the duration of the summer, we're going to switch the podcast over to being bi-weekly. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot more stuff to do around here in the summertime than there is in the winter. And so, you know, I got yards to mow or a yard to mow and other things to do outside. Mm -hmm. So we're going to switch to a bi-weekly format. Plus, it'll let me get more time in to write a decent outline for, for the episodes. Like, I know we just came off of a, uh, a week break and that's what I needed. And so, yeah, it, it gave me time to actually flesh this out more than when I was, you know, just, just doing them weekly. Mm -hmm. Um, so other than that, um, back on my Intellivision thing, uh, the, the gentleman that gave me all the Intellivision stuff, he also gave me almost brand spanking new looking voice module. And what that is, it's a, um, uh, well, I'm, do you know what an Intellivision is? No, not, not really. It, it was created by Mattel, you know, the, the, the toy company. Oh, okay. Uh, it was a competitor to the Atari 2600. Well, they came out with this voice module that when you plug it in, it's like a separate system. It kind of leeches off on the side of the Intellivision. Mm -hmm. And it, certain games, I think they only made like a handful of games for it. They had voice in their games. like, And it was really weird oh. the way it sounds. Yeah, that's interesting. It is. And so he gave me a voice module. And it's got a little knob on the front. And I didn't know what that did. That turns the voice volume up and down on the speakers on your TV. So it's kind of weird because the sound effects for the game are still generated by the Intellivision itself. Mm -hmm. And then the voice is done by that separate thing. It's just kind of weird. It's a neat little piece of gaming history. And so, yeah, he gave me that as well and a couple of other games to finish it out. So uh, last week I went to the Blue Gold game. Uh, that's the Notre Dame. Uh, basically, they play themselves. They divide the football team up in half, and they, it's like a big practice session. Mm -hmm. The coaches on the field. A couple of NFL players that graduated from N Notre Dame were there, so that was kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And Joe Montana was like 100 feet from me. Oh, nice. Yeah, he's down there getting his picture taken on the field. And so he actually turned around to get his picture taken, and he was like right in line with us, so we got his picture as well. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I didn't get to meet old Joe, but I mean, I, I think everyone at least has an idea who Joe Montana is. Mm -hmm. He was quarterback for the uh, 49ers way back when I was in grade school. So uh, Joe wasn't there playing, that's for sure. One funny thing about the Blue Gold game is that the coach, Coach Kelly, was actually on the field the entire time. So it's like a football game going on, and the quarterbacks wear red T-shirts, and you can't tackle them. Everyone else okay. is, like, full-on tackle, but they don't want to get the quarterbacks hurt for the practice session because mm -hmm. uh, they, they open their first game like 100 and some days, so it's, well, it's probably around 90 some days now. And uh, they, they, they don't want them to get hurt, so they just have to run up and touch them. And, and that's how they tackle them in the game. So that was definitely pretty cool. Uh, we, we just came back from seeing uh, Avengers Infinity War. And I think you and me are of the same opinion of the movie. Uh, yeah, it was good. It was all right. Yeah, it was all right. It's not the best darn movie I've ever seen. But yeah, for what it is, it did what it had to. And it was okay. If one thing, there's actually almost too much action. There's a ton of stuff going on on the screen. Yeah, they were transitioning a whole lot between, you know, different Avengers, um, Iron Man, what have you. Yeah, it felt like they took two movies and crammed them together. Yeah. Because it's like partially like an Iron Man and Friends movie and almost like a Captain America movie, mm -hmm. you know? And so that that part was okay. I also did a submission for the Atari 2600 Game by Game podcast. Uh, Ferg, the guy that runs it, he's a really cool dude. And he's plugged the show a couple of times, so I, I feel like I need to return the favor favor and plug him. Uh, it was the episode over Jungle Hunt, which is another game, kind of like Pitfall in the uh, on the Atari. And it's a pretty cool game. You, you swing from vine to vine. So definitely go over and check out his podcast, guys, if you're you're listening uh if you like anything retro he's a good guy he's like done a hundred and some episodes now 
and he's just doing it freelance. He doesn't ask for donations or anything, and he's always accepting of audio submissions. That's the cool part. He's just a really cool guy. Seems, seems like a very nice guy. I, I'd love to meet him in person someday. So definitely, we're, we're going to get on to uh, Tetris now. Now, this was originally going to be a two-parter because there's two Tetris games on the uh, N64. There's there's this Tetris, and then there's also Tetris Sphere. I think Tetris Sphere came out before this game, but this one's more like a normal Tetris. Mm -hmm. And Tetris Sphere is so odd that I didn't want to like have it overshadow this game. Uh, so facts about the game. It's one to four players, and it uses a memory card to save or transfer your lines. And I wrote in my notes here, insert cocaine joke here. So, I mean, yeah, it, literally, that's what it says. Save your lines. And the reason for that is, is that um, you have to unlock stuff. There's like a challenge mode, but you mm -hmm. have to like the first unlock is 2,500 lines. And that means you have to play the single player game. I don't know if it works toward multiplayer, but you have to play it and like get get that many lines across. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I ain't going to I'm, I'm not going to do this. But I just thought it was kind of funny. That's how they worded it. It's rated E for everyone. I mean, it's Tetris. Uh, released in North America on July 31st, 1999. Uh, PAL regions, which would be European, uh, got it on Oct October 15th, 1919, 1999. It was co-developed by H2O Entertainment and Blue Planet Software and published by Nintendo. H2O made uh, Tetrasphere. And the only other game I could find that I even recognized the name of was Flintstone's Big Trouble in Bedrock. <laughs> and not because I've played it. It's because I... I mean, it's the Flintstones. Who, who hasn't heard of the Flintstones? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And Blue Planet Software, they actually made Yoshi's Cookie, Faceball 2000, and a ton of other Tetris games. And it was uh, published by Nintendo. So one thing I like to do here is obviously talk about the back of the box. So the back of this box says, uh, with special new moves, and I believe they're referring to what they call wall kicks and stuff is what they called it. You, you could oh, okay. like transition the pieces in extra tight, which I thought you could already do that in Tetris. Wait, I think I did see that where like, it almost looks like it, the block is set and then you can like turn it like at the last minute. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah where normally it would be stuck in place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there's additional ways to score and room for up to four players simultaneously. This already habit forming classic will have you absolutely addicted platform. A special, yeah, perform a spin move to place that hard-to-fit piece. That's what you're talking about there. Can't use the shape you're given? Use the hold piece instead. Form multiple and mono squares, then clear them to make your score soar. You can even dump garbage on your friends as you compete in multiplayer mode. So what that means is your finish lines can be thrown over to your your opponents in, in multiplayer mode. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So it's up to four players and go head to head in the new multiplayer mode. Collect lines to build seven wonders from around the world, each of which gives you a unique environment and new music. Three game modes to choose from, marathon, sprint, or ultra. And of course, it's got a bunch of pictures from the game and uh you know and then the bottom one shows shows the four player version of the game going on there so that's i so that's the back of the box uh so yeah it's a tetris game that can hold up four players you can choose to dump your garbage to other players as i mentioned there's wonders and the first unlock was 2500 lines i wasn't going to play that much tetris i mean i do like tetris but mm -hmm. whew. uh and well, i tell you what i i did, did you get a chance to hear the music in the game uh it sounded more upbeat yeah I, I honestly didn't re, uh, care for it. Like they remixed the main theme, uh, theme, mm. and they added like a sort of French techno Euro feel to it, and it's just weird. The only thing I could imagine was baguettes dropping down instead of Tetris <laughs> yeah. pieces. And uh, I didn't care for the other tracks either. I actually went to the options when I was running it in an emulator, and I just went through and just listened to track after track. Mm. And it was like, what in the world am I listening to? I, I missed the classic three tunes from the old Game Boy or or, or Nintendo release. Mm -hmm. uh, now, now, have you played those? Yeah, I had um, I had a Game Boy Advance, and uh, well, either Game Boy or Game Boy Advance, and um, I just remember the old tunes, din, da, da, din, da, da, din, da, da, din. you know, those like that. They made it really iconic for me, and um, yeah, I I can't say I'm an avid gamer of Tetris, but yeah, I definitely know those tracks. Exactly. Yeah. So here, I'm actually going to pull it up and play it here, so we can hear it. Okay. And this is the, uh, I, I think this is the title theme music, as they put it. It's kind of weird to start off with. So now here it goes. See what I mean about the French beat? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't really care for this. 
Yeah. And it gets worse. Here, I'll skip ahead. Now, it does actually have a pretty cool intro, uh, which I'm going to play here while it plays this song. And it's actually like they're working on a pyramid. Huh. Maybe it's an Illuminati game or something. Great, they're going to come after me now. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, it's it, it's it's de- definitely different. I'll give them that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the uh, now one thing, uh, this game is actually known mostly for having a rant in the game code by the lead lead developer. His name was David Pretty. Uh, it's a source code rant, which I'm going to read here in full, and I'm not going to say the cuss words because okay. it's, it's cuss word laden, mm-hmm. and I like to keep this E for entertainment or for mm-hmm. everyone. And, well, and, and E for entertainment, which I, I probably never live up to that. But anyways, <laughs> uh, for those of you who don't know, um, uh, he, he left a rather large rant in the source code, uh, and it was found almost immediately when the game's ROM was dumped a- after release. And um, there's also a lot of ASCII art in there. And it's possible other people may have left rants in the game. I, I There's something listed as Mick Rant, and I'm not sure who that was. And so I'm going to read this from the cutting room floor. And this got them into a lot of hot water with Nintendo, believe it or not. Mm. They were they were not too happy about this. So, yeah, right here from the cutting room floor, this is a website. It's like a wiki for all this stuff that's been cut out of video games. Mm-hmm. And so it says right here, the new Tetris uh, uh, is a rendition of Tetris for the N64, and oh dear. David Pretty, a.k.a. Martial Artist, a.k.a. Martist, was one of the programmers who sadly died a few years after this game was, was released. And uh, most know of Dave's involvement in the game industry, uh, programming games, but not as many know about a secret message he slipped into the final code on the games he worked on, the Tetris rant. And at the time, he got himself an H2O in quite a bit of hot water with Nintendo. He figured it was it was a small piece of immortality and that no one would find it for years, if at all. It took the hardcore gamers about three days to find it and post it on the internet after this game was released. Now, David Pretty, you, you've probably never heard of him before, am I correct? Yeah, I have I guarantee you've heard one of his later games that he worked on, Unreal Tournament. Oh, yeah. yeah. I love that game. Well, he was one of the developers of Unreal Tournament. So, that, yeah. So, the thing about this, guy went from making Tetris to Unreal Tournament. That's nice. kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely an upgrade. So, basically, hidden in the credits. Uh, so, it starts off starting at A6CF4. That's the hexadecimal location in the ROM. Um, is a very elegant copyright message. It says, this code is copyright H2O Entertainment 1999. Get out of our code, you filthy hackers, with a smiley face and the word uh, B-I-T-C-H-E-S. And then it says, coders for the new Tetris were, and it said, lead system audio and engine were martial artists, that's him. Special FX ASM is FYSX. Uh, soft image data conversion it was by Granola Boy. Animation player was Free Radical. AI was Orion. No one else. Uh, D-I-C-K, F-U-C-K, all for code. So shut your effing traps. I don't know. So hidden rants. There are several hidden rants from the various programmers near the end of the ROM. Note that these rants have been cleaned up a bit to be readable. Normally, there are no new lines, just a lot of spaces. They don't seem to align to any specific width. These are preceded by executable section names generated by the computer starting at B8FE65. And there's just a bunch of system files listed. So here's the Dave rant. Dave's long, long rant. This makes uh, KNT's rant an iron tank look pathetic in comparison. I'm not sure what they mean by that. Must be another... uh, rant that's going on here actually i'm looking at the link and um yeah apparently yeah the the game iron tank has another rant listed in it as well so wow okay so he uh he starts off by saying i must say this was a fun time coming down to san francisco to do the new tetris although there were a few problems first of all being our producer d star n my god is this guy useless or what i don't hate you d star n but you suck And I mean suck as a producer. You should go back to testing video games, but I doubt you could even manage that properly. I feel sorry for you. During this project, you just sat around and played video games, StarCraft and EverQuest. Don't even deny that. When were you, when, when you were working, and that were is in all capitals, it was making stupid Excel spreadsheets to try and tell me how many bugs I had left to fix on a graph. Like WTF is that? Who cares? I have, the bug list in front of me like i need to see it in freaking technicolor so d star and i must say this hold on to and fake your job while you can because once they find out how truly useless you are you will be out of a job i cannot think of any skill set you would fit into this industry so you better hold on tight 
this guy thought I could save a name in 8.4 bits, like um, dot four bits. WTF is dot four bits. It's either on or off, not in between. Anyhow, enough about you, though. So that's the first paragraph. Jeez, how so, long are how long are they? <laughs> I'm just gonna read the top section here because the Mick Rant stuff is just like a list of 56 most loved things. Oh, okay. So yeah, believe me, this won't be too bad. To Nintendo, it has been nice working with you. A lot of you, uh, a lot of you are great, and we're great. Tom Snoop Dogg Herzog, you are great. One of the nicest people I've ever met at Nintendo. You and your crew's bug testing was outstanding, and I commend you for your excellent work. Eric was, you know, we have been friends a long time, but I must say this: after you had accepted the art form for the new Tetris, and later your higher-up said it was not unisex enough, you slapped the blame on H2O, Chris Bretz in particular. You did not have the balls to accept blame for your mistakes and stuck our entire team under immense stress and frenzy. This is your save a dollar sign dollar sign from getting in trouble at Nintendo. Oh, this is to save it. I still like you, Eric, which is more than I can say for the rest of the team that you screwed because of this. But I guess your standing at Nintendo is more important than the friendships you had here. You always knew we had talent, and you recognize that. I know you want to work with us again one day, but maybe outside of Nintendo. I think you screwed up those chances, though. While I'm screaming, I might as well say this. Neil Voss, your music is freaking kick a dollar sign dollar sign you are the one really damn talented boy but you are one of the laziest music guys i think there is smiley face you could go for it if you wanted to but you just lack the go for it it's a shame i wish you all the luck and would recommend you to anybody just because even though everything is last minute and like pulling teeth the end result is amazing and so I think, let me look at my notes here. I think, uh, uh, what was that guy's name? Yeah, Neil D. Voss. So we're actually going to talk about Neil Voss here in a little bit. I didn't like the music. I, had, I don't know what this guy's going on about. but Yeah. <laughs> I'm leaving H2O, uh, H2O after this project at 3D. It, oh, project to work at 3DO. I hope this will be a good move for me. I love H2O. As amazingly disorganized of a company it is, I love the people. I have so many good friends there. I will be hard to move. It'll be hard to move on. Of course, they will stay my friends. They were more than just coworkers. They were friends. They were the people I lived with, spent my nights and days with, went to bars with, camped with, drank with a lot, did other bad things with. Won't elaborate. Smiley face. Pot. Yeah. Come on. It's California. It's got to be pot. (laughs) They are true great friends and I love them all. And we'll miss them dearly. Although Vancouver is only a two-hour flight away. Okay, so maybe it wasn't uh, California. Well, wait, v- Vancouver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's over there on the western side. So, yeah, it could. I think it is. Um, matter of fact, I think we get into the company here. Uh, so, now, where was I? Uh, yeah, Vancouver is only a two-hour flight away. I hope I can visit often. My best friends would include Ross, Max, Scott, Jake, Bretts, Roland, Johnny, Sarah. These are the people I love the most, and I wish my you success. My 4.5 years at H2 were basically making games, drinking a lot, playing pool a lot, going to bars and raves and dancing while really screwed up in the head. That has to be the most fun I ever had and probably ever will. The good old days. These guys are in Vancouver right now because I stuck because I got stuck finishing this project in San Francisco, which by all means... I love and I'm staying, hence 3DO. Well, boys and girls, I just thought I would immortalize some thoughts I have at this moment into a ROM which will be burned forever. This game sucks. The music is great, but the game itself is not how we wanted it, unfortunately. I mean, it is a good game, but some things could be polished as well as sped up. Could use another month to finish this game off after all the bugs are fixed. Oh, well, woe is me. I would love to give my special loves and kisses to the following. My girlfriend, Amy Bond, my family, Joy Allison, John Pretty, Brant Sangster, my really, really best old friends, Salem Arkham, Corey Heberlin, Jason Val Silish, Alfred Hunger, Oliver Fredericks. Goodbye, H2O. It was a blast, and I mean that with all my heart. 1999, July 1st, David Pretty. If you're reading this, you can obviously see this disclaimer. All this material belongs to David Pretty. If you find it and want to post it on any media format, you must get my permission or feel my wrath. This text, if it is ever read, is intended to be read by hackers whom have dumped the contents of this ROM and viewed it. That is all it is for, and maybe some of them will remember me for the C64 and PC days. Martial artists of PETDT Razor 1911, Inc. FLT TRN FBR. I was in them all, and I made trainers and intros mostly. I think that scene 
for teaching me how to program because without it, I don't think I would be where I'm in today. So this guy obviously was like a hacker himself, I guess. Mm. Now, you know, the old term for hacker wasn't someone that would like get into systems and stuff like you and I think of hackers today. Mm -hmm. They would actually take and hack code and make, you know, the computer games and stuff. They, 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 they would hack the computer to do something that it wasn't supposed to do. Mm -hmm. that, that was the original version of a hacker. Not like what it's been turned into where it's some guy trying to break into your stuff in the middle of the night. Yeah, like you know. uh, home security or stuff like that, cameras, whatnot. Right, right, right. It's nothing like like what it is today. Yeah. At that time, th they would actually work at like universities and stuff, and, and they would make the uh, – uh, well, they would have these big terminals that they had to timeshare, mm. and they would make video games on them. That's what the hackers would do. They would hack it to do stuff like that. Mm. Well, that does it. 4.5 years and two games later, Tetrisphere and New Tetris. Unfortunately, I won't be working on no Noman's Quest. But oh well, happy Canada Day. And so that's the end of his rant. The guy seems very angry about some stuff. Well, another thing it sounds like, too, even though the music may be weird for us, maybe mm -hmm. back then it was, you know, it sounded good to them. So well, that, yeah. that, that may be it. Yeah, that's definitely possible. So he also goes to, um, you know, uh, go on and list of uh, uh, 56 most loved things starting right after the previous rant. It's probably a good bet that Francis from Left 4 Dead was based on this guy is what the notes say here. <laughs> I like Francis. I know, right? So it says right here like, uh, 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 oh, I just touched my mic. Sorry about that. I will just read a couple of these because a couple of them are actually pretty funny. So like number one, idiot teens hanging out in front of 7-Elevens, KFC, McDonald's, Jack in the Box, etc. Your life really sucks. It's that high point of your day. And a-holes who spit on the sidewalk. Drivers who don't know how to use a turn signal. I can reach mine with my pinky while driving. It's not that hard. Teens with their pants around their butts. People with personalized license plates. BMX bikes. People panhandling me. Get a job, losers. McDonald's is always hiring. <laughs> uh, bums with dogs. I'm sure the dog loves eating cheese from old pizza boxes. The cheese heads from Asia who take a Honda Civic, slap some stickers on it, put a muffler on it, makes that sound like a riding lawnmower, a ridiculous sized fin on the back, and think they have a Formula One racer. Devastating power, my butt. <laughs> the same idiots who then drive their hot Civic like they are in the Indy 500 through busy traffic. <laughs> Uh, the huge complex hairdos of African-American women, five layers, 6,000 curls, four sprouting areas, 200 dangling bits, 6,000 beads, air conditioning, enough hairspray in it that it would move if Hurricane George hit it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Some of these are pretty funny. People on the bus who talk so loud, you're forced to hear about their pointless lives. Uh, see, this guy sounds like, yeah, a hotel gators. Uh, just skipping through them. Budweiser beer and the people who drink it. I'd rather suck the piss out of a pig. It's time to poison the bud. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dead web page links and document not found errors. People in the fast lane who drive just two kilometers an hour faster than the guy in the slow lane. <laughs> Big fat bugs that splat on my windshield. Film crews making bad movies. Most people don't want to see blocking the streets and being annoyed. I bet that does happen a lot out there. Mm -hmm. I actually only have a little bit of experience with that. Uh, the little town I work in they actually filmed a movie there a few years ago. And uh, there are no fast food places in that town, right? Mm -hmm. I was a single guy. So my, my thing was to go. I have an hour lunch break. I, I would go somewhere and get some food and come back. Mm -hmm. And uh, they blocked off one of the only ways. Now, I could go north on one of two streets. If I went to one, um, I had to go way downtown to the next city over. Or I could go right and it was like the other side of, of that town mm -hmm. and there's a lot more food out there. Well, they blocked that street off. So you had to drive like an extra two miles out of your way going there and back mm -hmm. just because they were filming a movie. Mm -hmm. And I've never even seen the movie, but I have mm -hmm. been in the house they filmed it in. I have no idea why they filmed it in that house. I, I, I can't tell you. There's nothing special about that house. Something with the director. He liked it or something. I, I guess so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in my line of work, I, I, I go into a lot of houses and I've got mm -hmm. some horror stories and maybe maybe, maybe we could talk about them sometime. Perhaps. Yeah. Y you would not believe the things I have seen. I cannot believe the way some people live. I mean, I was in this one person's basement and uh, there there was a uh, ton of dogs in there and it, it was really smelly. Mm -hmm. But I went downstairs and, of course, where we had to work in the basement, there was... Uh, this old mattress down there. 
And I look down at it, and it's got a bunch of holes in it, like it's been eaten by dogs. And I look down, there was old poop on it. It was turning white. It was it was full of dog crap. Like the yeah. whole thing just yeah. And they just left it in their basement. Well, that probably was maybe where they just kept the dogs, like a dog pen or something. Oh yeah. Well, and they were there were two giant dogs kept in this one pen that. Uh, I mean, they, they were huge. This mm. pin was big enough for like you and I to sit in and still have room. Oh, wow. They, and, and they had these two dogs in it because the guy said that the dogs are very mean when he's not around. He was leaving. And I was just like, oh, great. Mm. You know? Yeah, you're and having it, me work in here now. <laughs> yeah, well, and of course, that was one of the places that uh, something wouldn't work right. And mm. so we were there for extra long. It, it, it's always mm. those houses. I, I kid you not. It's always those houses. Mm. always pisses me off i've I've been to other ones that were questionable and it always seems like there's something that just doesn't work when you're at those places Mm -hmm. i i I don't know if it's because you're trying so hard to get everything right that you just you know make a mistake because you're just like i just want to get out of here i just want to get out of here i just want to get out of here anyways yeah back here um cheap uh manufacturers dvds who list as features chapters interactive menus in the time these aren't features that's like calling your computer's keyboard a feature (laughs) So, I mean, yeah, I have seen that before. Mm. Features of the film, chapter selection. Uh, yeah, thanks. I don't know why they, I mean, it's convenient to have chapter selection, but I've never really used it mm-hmm. because if I put a movie in, I'm, I'm going to watch the movie. Mm. I'm not just going to, I'm, ju- I'm not just going to skim to a part of the movie unless it's where I left off. Yeah. That's the only way I can see you using that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Uh, spiders, all spiders, every one of them is another one of his complaints. And uh, last but not least, how on the Nintendo 64 game machine, half of the DAMN titles for it are called Misc Vid Game 64. Why not come up with a real name? Why is everyone just slapping a 64 on all the games? Uh, he's got a legitimate point there. I mean, mm. there is Mario 64. You know, that's not the 64th Mario game. Mm. I mean, we're, we're steadily approaching that. <laughs> um, Pilot Wings 64. Uh, the, I mean, there's just a bunch of stuff called 64. Superman 64. Yeah, now that you think about it, yeah. I mean, yeah. maybe it's just, well, 64 console, that's that's why. Well, I know, but, you know, they don't call it, like, Crash Bandicoot PlayStation. Or they don't call it God of War PlayStation. I mean, think about it, yeah. it's kind of weird. Yeah, true enough, yeah. <laughs> or God of War Station. It's God just, of War Station. It's a space station with God of War on it. So they also left some ASCII art here, as you can tell. So here's the H2O Company logo. Mm-hmm. This is embedded in the ROM. Uh, there's a bunch of mini rants here. Uh, fun size ones. The order really does go forth. Five, three, two, one. So, yeah, there's just a bunch of these uh, little rants built in here. Um, Something about greed and selfishness destroying our precious skies and our Mother Earth. You people better rise together. You people better rise up soon. I want my planet back. Um, It sounds like a lot of people just express themselves in the code, too. I think so, yeah. Uh, Embracing the God of energy within yourselves will bring all of you to a new understanding and value of life. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of expression mm. here. Uh, so here's some more ASCII art. There's some mushrooms and there's BPS for Blue Planet Software. It's their logo. There's a Canadian leaf. Um, there's a marijuana leaf. I told you there's marijuana in this. <laughs> uh, there's the N64 logo. Now, that's kind of cool. It's like a mm. 3D ASCII art. Uh, then there's some other ones. It says the new Tetris. It's the logo. Uh, and then there's uh, in order to pass Nintendo certification to receive the coveted Nintendo seal quality, H2O changed the game's crash handler to tell the player a cheat code instead of providing debug information. Now, this is an old trick, believe it or not, and I'll explain it to you in a second here. So this guy that wrote this is anonymous from Reddit. Uh, I was a tester for the new Tetris. Uh, there was a crash that I could reproduce every time, which would display a dump of the registers just before locking up. You had to power cycle the N64 to get it to go away. Even the reset key was unresponsive. Like, it crashed the system hard, right? Mm-hmm. Version after version, the developer said the bug was fixed. And version after version, I reproduced it. Closing in on the shipping deadline, the developer had to close out all the crashing bugs in order to ship. Testing is done by Nintendo, even on third-party games, and Nintendo has to approve it. But this bug would just not go away. The game also had some unrelated secret codes you could enter to unlock various things. One day, a joke to the developer should just replace the hex dump screen with a screen that says, Congratulations, you've discovered a secret code. Turn your console off and back on, then enter the username, H-A-L-U-C-I. So he did, and that's how it shipped. So... That's actually an old, old trick. And I'll tell you why I know this. There's this guy on YouTube. I can't remember his name, but he worked on Mickey Mania for the Sega Genesis. Mm -hmm. And um, he will post secrets about how they made the game now. 
mm-hmm. on, on YouTube, I happened to see a video that he made, and this is quite interesting. People were taking that game, it's a Sega Genesis game, mm-hmm. and they would take it and kind of halfway pull it out of the console, or they would slap the cartridge a little bit, mm-hmm. and it would send them to a level select. And so he was saying, why does it send you to a level select when you slap the cartridge? It was for this exact same reason. Uh, Sega at the time would check the games, and if they found bugs, they'd send it back to you to get it fixed. Mm -hmm. They didn't have time to fix that bug, so you know what they did? They made the bug send you to a level select instead of crashing. So basically, the game would crash because Mm -hmm. you move the cartridge, and that's going to make it crash because it doesn't know how to read the memory anymore. And instead of just crashing and having you reset the console, it'd send you to a level select. It, It would send you off to that level. Well, it's a better resolution than just crashing then. Yeah. Right, right. And, you know, and they, but he, he actually said they came up with that because they didn't have time to fix it. So it looks like these guys did the exact same thing. It's kind mm-hmm. of funny. And um, so, yeah, it says basically it says you've, uh, you've, you know, too fast for you is a single player name entry screen for intense gameplay. Please power off the control, console deck, then power on the control deck. So, you know, Nintendo was seeing this and they thought it was just a built in thing when they would find that bug. And it actually was a bug. They just didn't know it. Kind of brilliant, actually. Mm-hmm. Definitely is. So that's 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 that uh, hex dump, and I, I I will put a link to this. Um, well, not in the show notes on the website because that actually shows up in the podcast, and they don't like it when you put hyperlinks in a podcast. But if you go to the YouTube version of this show, I will definitely have it in the in the in the info section. So uh, the people that worked on the game, um, this is the the developer David Pretty went off. Like I said, he worked on Army Men Air Attack. Uh, so that's a 3DO made game. Mm-hmm. 3DO, of course, being the famous console. Well, they didn't make the consoles. They made a console design and mm-hmm. sold it off to other manufacturers like Panasonic. I actually have a 3DO set over there. Uh, okay. they're, well, they're kind of rare these days. Um, it, it never really called on here because it was like $699 when it was new. And this is in the 90s. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so they, after a while, after the 3DO fell, they just went into making software. Mm-hmm. And so they they were responsible for the Army Men games that you know of. Mm-hmm. And he also, as I said, worked on an Unreal Tournament. Maxwell Sales was the programmer. He did this and Tetrisphere. That's all I could find on it. Mm-hmm. Christopher Bretz was lead artist, art director for Alpha Protocol and The Conduit. Those are both Sega games. I don't know if you ever played those. Mm-hmm. Conduit sounds sort of familiar. But yeah, yeah. Conduit 1 and 2 were Wii games, their first first person shooters Mm -hmm. and uh actually i think kevin sorbo did the voice on the conduit the first one oh okay so it's kind of cool little little tidbit there for you and alpha protocol is like a spy thriller in the vein of it reminds me a lot of mass effect oh okay i actually have it on my steam account i'll have to download it and show you sometime it's Mm -hmm. basically you go up and you have like you know how in Mass Effect you can say stuff a different way and change the outcome. Mm-hmm. Well, you can do that in this game, but you're also sneaking around, jumping into buildings and shooting guys. Uh, Hank B. Rogers did the game design and concept. Now, Hank has done a lot of Tetris games He uh, as the executive producer. If you want to know, know more about Hank, I suggest you watch the YouTube video that the game historian did. Uh, have you ever heard of this guy on YouTube? Uh, no, I can't say Yeah, I the don't. gaming historian. He, he's pretty cool. He's okay. uh, he, he takes old games and... And does like a mini documentary on each one of them. Oh, okay. He did one on Tetris. It was almost an hour long. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And it gets really in depth. Uh, he tells you how in that video, how he helped Sergei Pajanov. He's the guy that actually created Tetris. He was, mm-hmm. he, he's Russian and uh, moved to the U.S. And then they founded the Tetris company, which they both still own. And the Tetris story is very incredible. I, I definitely encourage everyone to go watch it. It's, it's a, it's a good it's a good time. Mm-hmm. Basically, when Tetris was created, this guy worked for the um, academy over there. And that's government run. And when you're doing something for the government in the USSR, that's before they were just Russia. Mm-hmm. You know, this was before the Iron Curtain. This is during the Cold War. The uh, game was property of the government. So this guy was trying to get the rights to make the game. And they actually, like the government intervened and said, no, you can't do this that we have to make deals you cannot make deals with people hmm. and this guy had already like basically resold the rights to other companies for things he didn't even have the rights to and this hank b rogers guy was sent in by nintendo to uh basically get a deal so they can make it for the famicon that that mm-hmm. was the name of the nes in japan and he worked it out and him and this sergey guy got to be really close friends and it's just a really cool story and so, yeah, they're, they're still business partners today. That's why uh, in the early 90s, like 
when the NES came out, you could only get Tetris on there, but then you started to see it come out on like the PlayStation that was done by Jalico. Mm -hmm. It's because of the Tetris company. Once they got that founded over here, and Sergey, because at first he never made a dime off of it because the, mm -hmm. the government of Russia did. But then once that they got the Tetris company founded, he could actually start making money off of it. And that's why you see Tetris on a bunch of stuff. EA has a version of Tetris. It all is done by licensing, though, through the Tetris company. Oh, OK. Yeah. yeah. So it's kind of interesting. It's, it's, I, I encourage everyone to watch it. Uh, Neil D. Voss was the um, music and sound effects. He worked on Tetrisphere, Star Reach and Racing Gears Advanced. That's what I could find on him. And over on the Blue Planet side, we have uh, Don McClure. He was the producer. He did this, uh, the new Tetris, and Uprising, Join or Die. I don't mm -hmm. think I've ever heard of that game. That was from 1997. So I was running this in an emulator. It works great with no problem on Project 64 on the PC. On, the, on my phone, though, I tried to emulate it with Project 64, and it wouldn't render the pieces. I just got a background and no playable pieces. They were playing. I just couldn't see them. Hmm. So I switched to another N64 emulator on my Android. Played fine. Uh, there was um, uh, a ton of Android emulators. You can get some paid, some free. They all are based off of Moopin, so it doesn't matter whichever one you grab. Uh, the Amazon price for this is twenty one oh five with three ninety nine shipping, or I found one that's twenty six forty five with free shipping. On eBay, uh, now this is completed listings because I guess that's a better way to meter this. Mm -hmm. Completed listings were thirteen fifty with three ninety five shipping, uh, or ten fifty with five dollars shipping. So that was uh, games that had been sold already, mm -hmm. or there was a buy it now for around twenty bucks that I could find live. So this game's about twenty bucks in value or cost. Uh, so my thoughts on it: the game reminds me of the CDI version of Tetris due to the scenery. Mm -hmm. Now I actually love the CDI version of of this game. I actually have the soundtrack downloaded onto my phone because the soundtrack on that one I think is way better than this game. Uh, as far as the gameplay, to me, they got it spot on. I, I you know, I, it's Tetris. It's hard to screw it up. Apparently, David Pretty didn't think so. Yeah, I was going to say, Tetris is, nah, you can't really fail how to make Tetris there. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and so, uh, personally, I, I would have to stick to the Game Boy or, or the NES version of this. Yeah, and, I definitely agree. Yeah, and, and by NES, I mean the Nintendo version. The Tengen or Atari version of Tetris, the one that is really rare right now, mm -hmm. is, is fun. It's Tetris, but the music is not as iconic in that as it is in the NES one. When I think of Tetris, I think of the tunes we were talking about mm -hmm. earlier. And, um, you know, I'd say, though, this would be a fun party game. The single player version just doesn't feel the same as firing up the old Game Boy or the old NES. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I would say definitely stick to the originals. And uh, but but like I said, the scenery on the game is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so what were your thoughts on this title? Um, it's it's a Tetris game, kind of like how it says on the title. I mean, other than the music and the backgrounds, you still get, you know, your blocks that you put in a line and you get your scores according to those. So, yeah. So when I was saying that this reminds me of the CDI version of Tetris, let me show you a little bit of that here. It's because I uh, saw this on GameSack and I was just like, it's it's really weird. So here's 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 a sample of the gameplay. Oh boy, it's loud. Oh. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead here. So this is le level one, right? Okay. So what they did? Oh, nice live background there. Yeah. Now the CDI was a, uh, a another game console that really failed hardcore. And it used CDs, obviously. It was part of its name. A lot mm -hmm. of educational software. But their version of Tetris was really, really cool because it plays good. And they had this really cool background and this most relaxing music in the world. But like I said, I have it on my phone here. I think I like level four's music the best. No, I don't think that's it. Yeah, level three. So yeah, it's 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 different. It's it's like Weather Channel music. The game. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, it's really relaxing actually. It is. Like I said, the only thing that uh, I I don't know if you ever watched Game Sack. Those are pretty cool guys. They talk about retro stuff all the time. The only thing that gets annoying, I guess, is when you get so many lines, it pops up and says the next level name. Yeah, it kind of brings you out of the game if you were like you know, yeah. 
Yeah. Where in the Game Boy version or the NES version, it just makes a noise and the pieces get faster. Mm -hmm. Here, it actually takes you out of the game, changes the background. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's kind of a relaxing game. I could definitely enjoy this. Mm -hmm. I actually tried to run it on emulator, but getting the CDI to emulate is not something I want to spend a lot of time with. Now, I do have a surprising story to close up here. Okay. The one person in the world you would never figure would be a Tetris fan. Who's that? My grandmother. Yep. My mom's mom. Now, I've never met my my dad's parents. They they died long before I was born. Mm -hmm. Like my grandmother on his side died in the 60s. Mm -hmm. uh, it'd be my dad's mom. She died in like 1960 something. Mm -hmm. And my dad's dad died in 83, a year before I was born. And uh, I never met my mom's father. He lived somewhere in the South, died when I was a kid. Never even met the guy. Mm -hmm. But I did meet her mom. And that she lived just a few blocks away from us. And that was my grandmother. Uh, she still had her one son be my uncle living at home at the time. And he bought, uh, as I said before, the Intellivision she had was for him. Mm -hmm. It was left over from when he was a kid. But he had bought a Nintendo. And with it, he bought Tetris and Mario because it came with the Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, boy, got to ignore the dogs there, guys. Anyways, so my grandmother, she was the type that if you uh, she, she didn't know how to play Mario at all. But Tetris, she would. And I remember one time when I was sitting down there, she uh, she she wanted me to play Tetris. And I started to mess up a little bit. And she would actually, um, you know, she she actually would uh, start, um, like, grabbing the controller from you if you played the game wrong. <laughs> like, step aside, child. Let me try to do this. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. She actually has beaten the game several times. Well, like, you know, Tetris is, you know... And a world, uh, how do I say this? A widely known game. So, you know, it's good for the new age and, you know, especially for the old age. So it's not too surprising to see that, you know, other people would know about it, especially like grandparents or stuff like that. Right. It, it was the original Wii. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, the uh, anyway, she played Tetris really well and when you beat the original nes i think it showed like a spaceship blasting off or something mm -hmm. she could like when it got fast and this woman was in her like uh i want to say mid 60s mm -hmm. she could play it like no other i've never seen a person play tetris that good she literally my my uncles told me stories before she'd be up till two or three in the morning he'd get up and go to the bathroom there's his mother out there playing tetris and so uh excuse me for that anyways uh she would be up there and she would be just playing Tetris two, three in the morning, just kind of glued to it. And like I said, she'd take the controller away from you. Well, she probably played that for a good minute when she was younger. So that's why she's so good at it. Oh, no. The game came out in the mid 80s. So she just she was, must've... it's just something that clicked with her, you know? Oh, okay. She was just a Tetris fiend. She was that good at it. And so, yeah, that, that, that was my story, my closing story on Tetris. I told everyone I was going to tell them about my grandmother. Now, sadly, thereafter, she passed away shortly after. Um, oh. she, well, she had real bad cancer. She okay. smoked like a freight train. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had actually a stoma in her neck. That's where they cut your voice box mm -hmm. out. And she had one of those. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, one of those little talky things. Mm -hmm. And So, yeah, that part's kind of sad. But, uh, you know, that's that's why I don't think people should smoke. It is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they like to say, well, I don't know if it causes cancer. Mm -hmm. Thing is, I, from what I understand, as you know, my mother passed away of cancer as well. Mm -hmm. but, th but that was breast cancer. A little bit different. But uh, it doesn't cause cancer. You're correct. It enables cancer to happen mm -hmm. because it's destroying more and more cells, you know, as, as you're getting, uh, as you're inhaling that smoke, it's, it's destroying more and more of your cells, which prevents your body from fighting off any kind of rogue cell that, that decides to grow like cancer does. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're right. It, it's not causing, uh, cancer. It's, it's allowing cancer to happen. Mm -hmm. it, I, I've heard people say we get cancer every day. It's just your immune system goes in there, finds that single rogue cell fixes it before it can make bad copies of itself and then you're good to go mm -hmm. but when you start to do things like that and i think that's why things like free radicals are so important to to not have in your body that's why people say you drink a lot of tea and stuff because it kind of destroys those kind of things mm. yeah but now we're getting off into cancer and this yeah. is not a cancer <laughs> podcast um but believe me uh when we get back to miss pac-man because there's a miss pac-man game of the n64 i will be talking about my mother in that one because that was her favorite game and uh I, I would like to do that during like breast cancer awareness week. So that's not until the end of the year, like October, mm -hmm. 
But uh, we'll, we'll definitely be talking about that again. Got a lot of cancer stories. Uh, it's what my grandmother died of on my dad's side. I don't know what kind of cancer. But a lot of cancer out there. So if you have anything else to say, you can... If not, um, we're going to close this episode out of here. No, I'm actually pretty good. Oh, good, good. I'm glad you were on here. I think people like having you on here. No one said anything bad yet. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yeah. So anyways, you can reach us here. The website, of course, is n64podcast.com. You can get us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash n64podcast. You can tweet. That's uh, at the n64podcast. And, of course, email show at n64podcast.com. Like I said, we're always open to audio submissions, and uh, or if you just want to comment about anything, anything, any game on topic. I know I haven't been posting what games are coming up. Sometimes I get around to it. Like last last time was episode 10, a big one. Mm-hmm. We covered Star Fox mm-hmm. and we actually had an audio submission by one of the guys. Uh, uh, SDP sent an audio submission in. I wanted him to be a co-host, but my schedule's so frantic. I just don't know what I'm going to do it. You just mm-hmm. happen to be here again. And it's great mm-hmm. having you on. And um the show is available on Google Play Music, Stitcher, Player FM, and iTunes. So we're on a bunch of different platforms now. And um, you can also catch the YouTube version of the show at youtube.com slash andyvgr. That's my own channel from years ago. And uh, if you want to talk to me, uh, the best way to get a hold of me other than the email is my Twitter handle. That's at andyvgr. I post just about anything on there. It's kind of a personal thing. And, uh, you know, I'll post if I go to a game store, find some cool games. I take pictures. I post it on there. So Mm -hmm. it's just kind of cool. And, uh, you know, I also want to thank my wife for giving me time to put all this together and and, and encouraging me to do this. She really does. Like she she thinks it's therapeutic to get on here and talk. Mm -hmm. And it is in a way. It's good to sit down and have a conversation about stuff you have a passion for. Mm -hmm. And uh, the show's theme song, of course, is Technomax's Edge of Tomorrow. And Chris, do you have anything else? No, that's... That's about it, really. (laughs) All right, guys. And as always, I want you guys to go out there and, uh, you know, last but not least, good gaming, everybody. 